I would like to offer a critique to this supposed return to normalcy that liberals in the media as well as liberal politicians are offering you currently. But before I do that, I would like to show you a clip of MSNBC essentially promoting this line of thinking. Quick one. The other issue, Democrats have always banked on a turnout game, right? Mm -hmm. that they could get more voters to the polls. That wasn't the case in Virginia. Virginia had a huge turnout, but Republicans still won. What lessons do Democrats take from that going forward, particularly in midterms, where they have, they're not always as successful getting voters out as they are at a presidential? Democrats are tired. They're exhausted and they're sick of watching Democrats in Washington in disarray. They want, as you've seen some Democrats like Connor Lamb and others, normal presence from Democrats. They want a return to normalcy as we saw post-Trump, and they're not getting that. Alexei McCann from Axios, thank you so much for being here. We will see you again in person soon. Okay, so in the beginning there, he gave a little word to turnout. He's referencing the recent uh, Virginia uh, election for governor in which the Democrats suffered a loss, okay, a groundbreaking, groundbreaking loss. And he was talking about turnout, how it was like amazing or whatever. I want to read you a statistic. This is from NBCLX. Um, and they're talking about young voters here. The share of votes coming from Virginians under the age of 30 was just 10%, according to preliminary NBC News exit polls. Last November, the same age group accounted for 20% of Virginia votes. So that's a, that's a drastic cut in uh, young voters under the age of 30. Initial estimates based on the exit polling indicate voter turnout among young, uh, among adults, under 30 dropped by approximately 62 percent in Virginia from 2020 to 2021, compared to a 15 percent drop among voters over the age of 30. So young voters are fed up with the Democrats and what they have to offer or not offering. And what these idiots have come to the conclusion to on mainstream media is that, oh, they're tired, they're exhausted. But they're not tired and exhausted because of the lack of high paying jobs, because of the lack of um, health care, because of the lack of freedoms that they feel like they should have. No, no, no. They're tired because it's the post Trump era and they just want to return to normalcy. OK, well, let's have a quick little discussion. And I promise this will be brief because there's not really a whole lot to say about this, because to me, this issue is black and white. The president of the United States is Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a corporatist. In fact, he told the business class before he took office that things would not fundamentally change. And so far, he has kept true to that promise. If you don't believe that, open your eyes, please. It'll do you a huge favor to do that. The only thing that I can think of that's that they that's not giving the impression that this we are in a normal, what they consider to be normal state of affairs. It's the ongoing pandemic. You know, we had eight years of Barack Obama. How after eight years of Barack Obama, the poster boy for normal neoliberal politics where incrementalism is practiced and you don't do a whole lot for the population and you cater to Wall Street and the rich. Eight years of that. And then you get the behemoth that was Donald Trump. We had eight years of normal and then we got Donald Trump. Was he some aberration? What happened? How did he get elected? Was it racism? Was it bigotry? What happened? What was it? Was it this wave of conservatism that just took over the country? How did after electing a Democrat like Barack Obama for two straight terms, the American people then turn around and elected Donald Trump? I'll tell you why. It's because of this quote unquote normalcy that they boast and promote and insinuate on so many occasions that the people want. It's a lie, it's a fallacy, and if they don't know it, they're idiots, and some of them do know it, and they're just propagandists. There's no if, ands, or buts in between it. I mean, so you get eight years of Obama, of normalcy, and then you get Donald Trump. How? Well, you got a guy that was promising something different. Now, he's a liar, and he didn't deliver on any of those promises, but he was different in the eyes of the people. He railed against the establishment, which the people hate. And he, uh, you know, talked about ending the war. He had a really good message, basically, is what I'm trying to say, um, leading up to his victory to the defeat of Hillary Clinton. And let's give a word to Hillary Clinton. She's basically Barack Obama 2.0. That's what she was. The people rejected her. They rejected your so-called normal. So I asked the question once again. 
what is this so-called return to normalcy? Are we not already back in it? Because I think we are. You know, of course, minus the pandemic and we're back in the Obama years. I mean, it, it, it really makes no sense to me. But of course, when I think about it a little bit further, it does, because these people have a narrative to continue and they have to keep the bounds of conversation within the confines of what's, um, you know, dele relegated to them from the establishment. And that's all that they have to do. They don't, they don't want you to think they don't want you to uh, think critically of the system and how it can be different and be better. And what it currently is, just accept the way things are and just be happy that Donald Trump isn't in office and the Republicans are in the minority and the Democrats are in the majority. And then, you know, everything is normal and everything's fine. But the truth, the reality is everything isn't fine. If after eight years of this so-called normalcy under Barack Obama, we get Donald Trump, things couldn't have been fine. There's no way things could have been fine. And the quicker they realize that, the better they'll be off. But they won't. They won't. They'll continue to um, throw out these sorts of narratives and continue these kind of conversations because they truly believe this stuff. And it's absolutely asinine and it's completely ridiculous that this is what uh, Democratic politics have been subjected to this uh, supposed return to normalcy. And it's not working out very well, not for the Democrats and not for Joe Biden. His approval rating has been plummeting and it still is plummeting. He has a 38 percent approval rating. Kamala Harris has a 28% approval rating. It's not the result of left politics. No, he, he hasn't passed any groundbreaking progressive legislation as of yet. I mean, he hasn't done much. So we are in a state of what's normal for American politics right now. And I argue that against anyone because, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. So look, man, this is a disastrous way of thinking and... You won't get votes this way by saying that, oh, well, we're not Donald Trump, so vote for us and we'll go back to normal. Little do they realize is that normal was actually really, really bad for a lot of people.